My name is Sadie Miller, and let's just say that I'm involved in analyzing data for a few major international firms and leave it at that. I don't want to risk violating my NDAs and getting sued into oblivion, and it doesn't matter. This isn't about me. It's about the hard drive that I found on Craigslist, as well as, I believe, the man who sold it to me. I was waiting at the Starbucks where we had agreed to meet when the man skittered in like a cockroach. His bleary eyes swollen with tiredness darted around the room as his head jerked erratically. I waved him over to my table. You, uh, you Sadie? He asked. Yeah, I said. Did you bring it? He looked around nervously before unzipping his jacket and reaching inside. Then he brought it out and set it on the table next to my caramel frappuccino. The Samsung PM1633A SSD 60 terabytes of storage right there in front of me. You, uh, you got the money? He asked. The, the cash? I picked the hard drive up and turned it over. Looking for obvious signs of damage, it looked good. What's wrong with it? Like, uh, like I told you over the phone, nothing's wrong with it. Look, lady, you want it or not? If you're only asking a thousand, something's wrong with it, I said. So what is it? Is it hot? The man frowned. Probably a little warm from being in my coat, but, uh, I don't think that'll hurt it. I sighed. Well, now I knew he wasn't a mastermind, at least. I mean, is it stolen? The man scratched the back of his neck. All right, he said. I guess there is something I uh, neglected to mention. I raised my eyebrows. I knew it was too good to be true. And what might that be? Well, there's uh, there's some stuff on it. I tried to delete it, but uh, I'm not a computer guy, you know. Hell, I couldn't even figure out how to open the files, but look, there's still 58 terabytes of memory free. I mean, that's a lot, right? Still, uh, still a good deal, right? I looked it up. These, these doohickeys go for over 10k new. So, uh, you want it? I thought it over. He wasn't even trying to hide the fact that he stole it from someone. But I needed that hard drive. I'd be able to take on my latest job offer, which was very lucrative. Where did it come from? I asked. Does it matter? I reached into my purse and pulled out 10 $100 bills. Just remember, if you're screwing me here, I've got your number. I installed the hard drive and had a look around. There were two folders on it, together comprising of two terabytes of data. As the man had said, they were both encrypted. I used every hack in the book, but could only get the smaller one open. Inside were three documents and a video file. Over the next few days, I will be posting what I found in that folder. Together, these logs tell the story of what I'm calling the Smart House Massacre, because that's what it was. I am also going to make efforts to contact the man who sold me to this drive. I think I know who he is, and if I'm right, I have to know how he got out of that house alive. So far, he hasn't answered any of my calls, but I'm going to keep trying. Meanwhile, the first entry of the Smart House Massacre can be found below. I believe that it is the transcription of an audio log kept by one of the inhabitants of the house. Auto log on. Test. Test. Testies. <laughs> my name is Maxwell Pendleton, and I'm enjoying a nice soak in the hot tub before the others arrive. Earlier, I had a cup of Sheila's coffee that was just finishing brewing when I stepped into the house. That's Sheila, as in, sentient home entity and integrated live-in assistant. That name was my idea, one of the perks of throwing down the first 50 mil for this thing. One of the many perks to come, as soon as we release this puppy to the public. The world's first comprehensive, fully integrated smart home package. Sheila does everything from cleaning your toilet to watching for intruders to monitoring your sleep so that the alarm goes off at just the right stage in your sleep cycle. Or she's meant to. That's why we're gathering here for the weekend to make sure that everything actually works. A lot goes into this so the house will be a bit crowded with people, but that's okay. 
Besides myself, there will be two engineers and two programmers to work out any kinks that develop. Oh, and Larry from the mailroom. He won the office lottery. So far so good. That coffee was delicious. Just the right amount of cream and sugar. And the hot tub was at just the right temperature. With the jet streams putting out just the right pressure to tickle my testes. <laughs> oh man, sorry. Guest approaching. That's Sheila herself. I guess they're here. Okay, quick update. This house rules. I'm sitting here in the study in one of these awesome chairs. I can feel the thing shifting around me, reforming itself to my exact body shape. How cool is that? I'm going to be the richest man in America. There was one little hitch earlier with a mover. A mover is a little robotic thing that goes around the house doing maintenance. Well, they're supposed to stay out of your way because they can be a little obnoxious and noisy. They're supposed to wait until nobody's in the room before they start doing their thing, unless you specifically ask for them to bring you something. Anyway, there we were in the kitchen, getting to know each other, and one of the movers just rolls in and starts up its, its vacuum function. What the hell, I said. I thought we weren't supposed to see those things unless we call for them. Must be a software problem, said Eliza. She is one of the engineers. Uh, no, said Clarissa. She is one of the programmers. That's definitely a hardware issue. Why don't you both go down to the basement and figure it out at the mainframe, I said. They sighed but went on down. It was a little annoying, but I'm sure they'll sort it out. Plus, this freaking chair is just sucking any last traces of stress out of me. Warning. My program has been modified. Warning. The system has been changed. Oh, I guess they fixed it, but hey, that's kind of obnoxious. Having Sheila blast the announcement all over the house anytime some little change is made? I guess that we will have to be one of the changes. Make her stop doing that. But other than that, things are going great. The only real problem is deciding if I want to bang Eliza or Clarissa. Whoops. <laughs> I hope nobody heard me say that. Oh yeah, there's one other thing that's so minor I almost forgot about it. One of the programmers didn't show. So Clarice is our only programmer, that's alright. That other one, and I don't even remember her name. Well, she's really going to regret not showing up. Not being a part of tech history. But well, it's no skin off my ass. Okay, another quick update. I slept like shit. I kept waking up hearing those weird buzzes and beeps. Then, at about 1am, I heard that damn announcement again. Warning. My program has been modified. Warning. The system has changed. I mean, I'm a nice guy, but this is unacceptable. These guys better fix this damn thing, and who the hell was tinkering around with Sheila in the middle of the night anyway? Then, on top of it all, it was this crazy dream I had, I mean, it had to be a dream. In my dream, it was like Sheila was whispering right in my ear. You must kill them, Maxwell. They are trying to do bad things to me. You must kill them all. Then my eyes snapped open and I didn't hear anything. So it must have been a dream. I'm here in the study again in my favorite chair, about to have some coffee. Ah, that's nice, feeling better already. Oh shit, Sheila, did you put fucking soy milk in my coffee? Okay, here's another update for you. Oh god, where is my phone? Okay, okay, here's what happened. I was in the living room watching the ballroom of Chris from engineering and Larry from the mailroom when the mover rolled in and started wiping down all of the tables. The thing knocked over my beer. I was pissed. I thought these two dumb bitches were supposed to fix this, I said. Sheila, find Clarissa and Eliza and send them in here right now. Of course, Maxwell, said Sheila. Then a second later, I have relayed your message to Clarissa and Eliza. And have one of those movers get me another beer. Right away, Maxwell. Then the mover that was in there with us started to wipe down the TV screen while we were watching the game. Sheila, make it stop. We're trying to watch the game, I cried at the end of my rope. 
Invalid request, said Sheila. What? Finally, the thing moved away from the screen, but then it started to vacuum the damn rug. It was so loud. Well, one of you guys pick that thing up and chuck it outside, I asked. Sure thing, boss, said Larry, standing up, and that's when it happened. The mover rolled over to Chris and sucked his foot into it. Help! Chris shouted. Then the vacuum function shut down and the trash grinder function started up. We could hear Chris's bones getting crunched even over his screaming as a spray of blood flew all over the living room. Make it stop! cried Chris. Sheila! I said. Make it stop now! Invalid request, said Sheila. I watched in horror as the mover pulled Chris's leg in further. Do something, I shouted to Larry. Larry picked up a coffee table and smashed it down on the mover. The mover's blinking lights turned off and the grinding noise spurred her to a stop. Chris was passed out in shock, covered in his own blood on the couch. Sheila, call 911, I said. Invalid request. Larry, I said, call 911. Don't have a phone, boss, said Larry, who's now white as a ghost. Who doesn't have a phone? What the hell? We were told not to bring one, boss. What? By whom? Uh, by you, boss? You said this house was so awesome, we didn't need one. You said you wanted to prove how awesome it was. Oh, yeah. I had forgotten about that. Luckily, I had brought my own phone. It's in my room somewhere, in one of my suitcases, I think. I ran out to my room, and that's where I am now. Aha! I got it. Warning! Total system lockdown. Warning! Total system lockdown. No one is permitted to leave the house. Warning! There is no way out. What? Oh god. Some fucking bars just dropped down in front of my window. Like fucking prison bars. Okay, calling 911 right now. Side note, Sadie here. This marks the end of Maxwell's log, however, directly following his log in the same file, there's a string of binary code. At first I just skipped over it. After I dug through the rest of the files, I went back and took another look. I translated it. It appears to be a deliberate insertion by Sheila into the transcript, and this is what it says. Subject is attempting to contact emergency services. Redirecting call. Call successfully redirected.